Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 406. Should you get testosterone replacement if you have had prostate cancer? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. A number of doctors that are in practice today around America regularly tell their patients that they don't believe in hormone replacement therapy. They tell them that they're going to, if they get hormone replacement therapy, they're going to make themselves sick or they're going to die. That is especially true around conversations with men who are concerned about prostate cancer. For many years, doctors believed that the evidence showed that if you took testosterone replacement, it would cause your prostate to increase in size and it would increase the likelihood that you would develop prostate cancer. Now, many doctors, especially those that are more in the forefront of changes in medicine, mm -hmm. are beginning to question that wisdom, that, that uh, generally perceived belief among physicians that you shouldn't get testosterone, testosterone replacement if you've had prostate cancer uh, or if you're at risk for that. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the two things together combine for a disaster. And Dr. Keith Roach, who is nationally known as a, a medical writer who writes columns, question and answer columns. He also send practices. In, and, he, and he has a private practice. Has recently written a, a column that uh, appeared in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, which is where we are, in which he discussed this issue with an 82-year-old man who had had prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And this man wrote to Dr. Roach and he said, okay, I, I had prostate cancer and I had a kind of prostate uh, treatment mm -hmm. in which they insert little tiny balls of radioactive material in my scrotum. And, and not really into the prostate itself. Into the prostate. And they it killed the cancer. Mm -hmm. As far as we can tell, I'm cancer free. He said mm -hmm. since that happened, it was like five years ago, mm -hmm. he's had continuous monitoring of his uh, PSA. PSA, and the levels have not gone up. Uh, right. So he's considered to be healthy. But he's 82 years old, and he suffers from chronic fatigue that he didn't used to suffer from. Mm -hmm. And he says, I've talked to my regular physician about it, and I want to get testosterone replacement to give me back some energy mm -hmm. and some muscular strength mm -hmm. uh, to, to fight off fragility that comes with aging mm -hmm. and to just not feel the fatigue. And my doctor says, no, the research says that if we do that, you're likely to have a reoccurrence of your cancer. But that's old research. And I'm not even sure that when we go back and look at it, that's a research that we can research. actually find. Dr. Yeah. Dr. Morgan Taylor, a different doctor. Yes, who uh, doctor, teaches who, at Harvard. Who teaches at Harvard, has a book out that's here, uh, Testosterone for Life. And he believes and has, has a, a chapter about why we think Testosterone causes prostate cancer, cancer, which is wrong, and it's a, it's a. He says it was a misinterpretation of the data of the original research. It's like telling gossip, and you keep telling it, and keep telling it, and it becomes true. Mm. I mean, basically, it was a misinterpretation that came down. Even when I was in medical school, they told us that. Right. And um, they they haven't wavered from that, even though studies show that testosterone doesn't cause prostate cancer. And he's he's been heading some of the studies, right. but there's studies all over the world that say that. So we have, um, we have a lot of empiric evidence that testosterone doesn't cause prostate cancer and that after you have had prostate cancer, after the five years when you're considered cured, you can have testosterone. Mm -hmm. And that is what... And it won't bring the cancer back. And it won't cause the cancer to come back. Right. So it doesn't cause it initially, but if you get it from some form or reason... Mm -hmm. And you go through the treatment in the five-year window, mm -hmm. and then you decide you want testosterone, mm -hmm. or you and your doctor decide testosterone mm -hmm. would be good for you. The 
administration of that testosterone won't cause a resurgence of the cancer. Right. So there's research mm -hmm. that says that is what Dr. Morgan Taylor says. Mm -hmm. It is also what Dr. Roach says yes. in his article mm -hmm. that appeared in the paper. <clears throat> Dr. Roach said that he went back and looked at seven different studies over, that covered 200 men. Well, what he does say is there's no large-scale research, uh, specific research, that has looked at this issue. But there are several small-scale research mm -hmm. uh, projects that have looked at it. This research that he looks at, these seven different projects, cover 200 men mm -hmm. who have had prostate cancer and are technically considered to be in remission. In re yeah. Of those 200 men, only one suffered a re-emergence of cancer. When given testosterone. They yeah, were all, all given testosterone. They were all given testosterone. But 199 of them didn't get it. Right. So what he says to this 82-year-old man is, I would not recommend or tell you that your doctor is wrong. Your doctor knows you, and I don't know what your doctor knows about testosterone and medicine and you. So I wouldn't say that to you. But what I will tell you is mm -hmm. that in my practice, in consultation with a urologist, mm -hmm. we make the recommendation, give the old guy the testosterone. So he has a quality of life. It has to do with quality of life. He's 82. And it has to do. It has to do with the risk factors. Mm -hmm. We don't see, and the data from these seven research instruments mm -hmm. show that he's not an increased risk That's of right. getting his prostate cancer back. Morgan Taylor goes to the extent of saying that it is a low testosterone level mm -hmm. that puts you at risk for prostate cancer, and not a high testosterone level. And that is that's his. That's what he's been proving with all of his research at Harvard. So he's talking about the original the occurrence original cancer. of cancer. Mm -hmm. That well, you know, it's a low level of. of the common wisdom is that's the common wisdom is, is what most people believe, including mm -hmm. most doctors. If mm -hmm. men live long enough, they'll get prostate cancer. That's because if they live long enough, they'll have low testosterone long enough to get prostate cancer. Really? Yeah. And that's well, that's what, what Morgan Taylor's conclusion is. That's because he says that they they used to think that because they did some studies that showed if they re replaced your testosterone or gave you testosterone at a certain point, that your uh, PSA count would go up, your prostate would enlarge. And they thought that that meant and cancer. They thought it meant but that, that doesn't mean cancer. All right. That means that you're, when, initially when you get testosterone, after a long period of not having enough, your uh, prostate has receptor sites for it, and it fills with the testosterone, it fills all the receptor sites. It's like a sponge sites. that's dried out. Right. And you put the testosterone in and, and, and it, it swells up. And it does get a little bit larger, mm -hmm. although I have men who have BPH and they take their testosterone, it gets a little bit larger. Their symptoms don't get worse. BPH. BPH is b benign prostatic hypertrophy. It's a bigger prostate. That's what I thought you meant. So it doesn't make them have m more symptoms. And the, the enlargement goes down after three to four months after while they're on testosterone. All the tissue gets saturated. Right. And then it goes so, down to normal. So it puffed up because it was shriven. And it was, it was sh yeah. shrunk, shrunk. Puffed up to its normal yep. size. Didn't puff up any bigger. And then it stayed steady. Right. Okay. And it didn't damage the prostate at all. So the whole, we, we've recently done. I think we've we, been we're, believing a lot of lies <laughs> over time because that, they really didn't have a lot of studies to say that prostate cause, right. I mean, excuse me, testosterone caused prostate cancer. Yeah. That in the beginning, it was just a few patients. Well, and they made conclusions from limited data. And what Morgan Taylor says, they made conclusions erroneously right. from limited data. Mm -hmm. And then once that gets entrenched in the medical mind, yeah, I think doctors may be innately stubborn. I wouldn't say that about you personally, but. Can we say male doctors? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure we can. We yeah, can say protect that. Protect yeah. my sex in the, yeah. in the profession. No, you know, it's <laughs> there's so much to learn, and when they learn it, they lock in on it. And it's really hard to change. They're very resistant to change mm -hmm. for many of them. Mm -hmm. and, and you fight that battle on a regular basis because you have a lot of your patients that come to you that are not referred by other doctors, mm -hmm. that come to you because they've heard about you, mm -hmm. they've read about you, they're experiencing symptoms, they do mm -hmm. some research, and they say, I, I want to try this out. And so they come in. You guys make the decision they're going to get pellets, and mm -hmm. they get their testosterone 
their estrogen replaced. Mm-hmm. Then they go back to their regular physician, and their regular physician says, oh, my gosh, your blood numbers are so high. What are you, what's going on? She says, well, I'm getting testosterone replacement from Dr. Maupin. And they say, oh, she's going to kill you. You mean my blood numbers? You yeah. mean your blood count? Your blood counts go are high, like some, the some testosterone people, score. Oh, or, those. That's your yeah. testosterone level. Yeah. Yeah, well, they don't look at the free testosterone. They look at the total. total. And the total in women have a much smaller or a much, yeah, a much smaller percentage of active testosterone than men. Uh-huh. So we can have a pretty high number and have very little of it act, uh, active. So but they don't necessarily realize that. And the they standard lab it. reports just show total testosterone. Mm-hmm. Unless they've asked for a mm-hmm. free measure, they just get a total mm-hmm. measure. And the total so doesn't the tell total the story. total number is really high. Right, but the, the and patient scares is just them. getting a small amount. Anyway, it doesn't do anything. No. No, it doesn't the, cause any problems. It, I'm not sure exactly what they're afraid of. But I mean, their original medical training suggested to them, if there's a bump up in those numbers, be wary of cancer. Their original their original training said women didn't have testosterone, and this if you is, go back far enough. Yeah, but we're yeah. but no, I mean, we still have to like, fight that fight. That fight's not settled yet. Yeah. And in men, they look at the numbers, and I'm bringing men back to normal adult optimal levels, which means that they should be 400 to 1,500 of a total testosterone, Uh and their free should be 129 to 350, and they're different units. Um, So the the free testosterone is a much smaller unit, so it's not exactly proportional. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they those units are much higher than what they have on their sheet from the lab and those those numbers have been there forever, and they're really low. So they're either giving numbers that they haven't changed in twenty years, mm-hmm. or they're and have not followed the research, or they're they're putting numbers there that are for old men. And I'm not comparing my patients to somebody who's the same age right. or older. I'm comparing them to young, healthy men when so you, when they had good testosterone. Levels. You're not trying to restore my testosterone to the uh, a healthy level seventy year old. Good healthy level. seventy year old. No. I'm You're, trying to bring you to a 35-year-old level. Okay. Which isn't, I mean, highest is at 19. I'm not going there. But, I mean, 35 is a good, decent, mature level of testosterone for somebody to, to at any age, to feel normal. Yeah. And, and so that's And to receive the health benefits that that level of testosterone will bring. Right. Right. Otherwise, at 70, I'm at risk for a health deficit simply because yeah. I don't have that level That's of testosterone. True. Osteoporosis, heart disease, mm-hmm. increasing your... I mean, the minute your testosterone drops... ED. Your, cholest- your cholesterol goes up. Yeah. And so that's how I kind of know when, I, when I, somebody doesn't know when their symptoms started. I say, so when did you go on a statin? Well, when I was 45. Well, that's when your cholesterol... That's when right. your testosterone drops. Mm-hmm. Or b- right before that. So that's my... That's my kind of secret question to ask them because then I can get a good handle on how long this has been going on. Mm-hmm. So it's for, for many of the, um, many of the guys, they want to believe that this is true, <laughs> that yeah. they can take their testosterone, even if they've had prostate cancer or even if they're at risk for prostate cancer. But, um, but, and it is true, but it's not dangerous. I mean, they feel like they're taking a big chance and it's not dangerous. Well, you know what, to, personally, at 82, if I were uncomfortable and having a lot of symptomology, I would want to look at quality of life issues. Right. You know, I know we have to make a medical decision about my treatment and that there might be a level of risk here. And you as a physician would explain to me what the level of mm-hmm. risk is. Based on that consultation, I'm going to want to make a decision that says, can we find a balance point where mm-hmm. I'm not in pain, where I'm not exhausted. I'm not depleted. Mm-hmm. I may still have a sex drive. I mean, mm-hmm. there are things that I want in my quality of life mm-hmm. that if I can get, I want to get. And if you say, well, there might be a risk of some adverse consequence. I would say, well, what is the risk? And based on what Dr. Morgan Taylor is saying, and what Dr. Roach is saying, we don't actually know. And okay. what we know is there's no proof that it's going to cause this. A trouble. Any trouble. One out of 200 known cases developed it. I mean, that's a really good and we risk. Don't, and, and that's not a one-to-one causation. That's a correlation. Mm-hmm. So it, it makes a difference that way. And, right. and it's not in Dr. Roach's column, but recently, 
Physicians all over America are starting to re-examine their understanding about PSA counts Mm -hmm. and prostate issues. And Mm -hmm. one of the things that they are beginning to uh, consider is that as men age, the the average number score, the healthy number for the PSA, which has always been four Mm -hmm. to four and a half, uh, for the average guy, is going to start to inch up. It's going to be a little higher. As you get older. As you get older. So also, after 55, Yes, basically. yes. And, and also as you get beyond that, in the 60s and 70s, if you get a high score and your prostate's enlarged, they very often make the determination, let's just monitor it. All right. If nothing else happens... And we don't want to do anything because the consequences of doing the, something the treatment is worse than can the be disastrous. Sometimes yes, at that point, and so, and so there are changes coming mm-hmm. in the way doctors understand prostate issues uh, and and hormone replacement issues. So have these conversations with your physician. What do you know about this? Have you read these things? Can we talk about these things so that you can make a, with with your physician? a good decision for your quality of life at your age with your issues. I want to add one more thing. Even if somebody came into my office who had prostate cancer last year Mm -hmm. and was treated, I would not treat them with testosterone because of a legal issue. Right. Because I would have nowhere to stand if If something went wrong. wrong. If they did get their cancer back for no fault of the testosterone, I mean – then they're not cured till five years. So it would be a legal decision. Not a medical not one. Not a medical right. one to not treat somebody for the first five years because I want to make I do want to make sure that they're clear, but I've had lots of East Coast doctors who have treated patients that have finally found their way to me. They've had prostate cancer and their surgeon said, take testosterone, it'll make you feel better, it'll help you fight the cancer coming back. Right. And so I mean, I think it's much more prevalent there than it is in the conservative Midwest. What if they're Midwest. willing to sign a release? Oh, those doctors would, but I mean, it depends on if my patient went to that doctor or his best friend went to that doctor or, you yeah, know, or yeah. he knows other people who were operated on by that doctor who then, yeah, I mean, it's, I would have to get a consent before five years, but after sure. five years, these types of articles are, are my defense. Right. But I think that it would... I mean, if it were my husband, he, be pushing it. I'd be pushing the testosterone yeah. because I think that he would feel terrible and exhausted and miserable without it. So it goes to the question of quality of life. Yeah, and that's his quality of life. But I don't think that that would Put shorten his life. In fact, risk. there's so many factors that say that testosterone decreases the risk of death from any cause including prostate cancer. Well, and we don't have so, a high-volume study. We have right. a number of low-volume studies. No, but studies. those studies that showed a benefit from right. testosterone, I think the benefit and the risk would probably, mm-hmm. if there was a risk, outweigh each other. So it does benefit you to take testosterone as you get older. All right. Well, that said, thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.